Is pornography good for you? This lady is trying to convince us it is, but I will have none of it. Today I respond. Hey, what's up guys? It's Isaac David and this is the Daily Disciple where I help you find Jesus and follow him daily. If you're new to the channel, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. You can follow me on Instagram where I uh, become a little bit more personal there. Uh, post more about my life if you're interested in that sort of thing. Anyway, at it's Isaac David if you want to follow me on there. Now on to the video. Now, it won't come as a surprise to you that pornography is one of the biggest issues of our generation. With the growing popularity of cancel porn and also the pushback from major social media platforms that are trying to suppress anti-porn sentiments, um, it's an interesting place to be. Especially as a Christian, um, the news and studies have come out that 90% of men, even within the church, are watching pornography on a monthly monthly basis. So the question is, is pornography good for you? And how do you break free from pornography? I have a pretty popular video, surprisingly popular, I don't know, um, whatever, <laughs> it's weird. Um, I have a, a video on how to break free from pornography. I'm going to link it somewhere up here um, that you can watch as well. And I'm going to kind of re reiterate some of those ideas and tips in this video as well. And I'm also going to combat uh, what she's saying here about, I guess, pornography being good. Let's see what's up. Media coverage of pornography tends to have headlines all about the negative side of pornography and how it's ruining everybody's lives and relationships. Obviously, it's important to talk about some of the problems of porn, but yes. often these are the only conversations we're having about porn. There's no education and there's no balance. It's pretty much all negative. Let me make this clear. I don't give a crap about being balanced. I care about being biblical. And in terms of our understanding of pornography, we need to understand that it is a distortion of God's design for sexuality. When he designed us, he designed us for, uh, to, for sexual fulfillment to take place in the context of marriage, where man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Because of the just sin in our world and in our lives, our sin nature, we have this propensity, this tendency towards sexual expression that is not good, that's actually harmful. And pornography is one of the clear examples of that. Uh, you don't even need to look to only Christian sources to see anti-porn messages because non-Christians are beginning to find out as well that pornography is detrimental to not only your personal life, but your relationships as well. And so I don't care about being balanced about, oh, well, there might be some good things about it as well. Like, no, I want to be biblical here and we need to cling to the word of God. Because yes, there are pragmatic things uh, that we can look at um, in terms of why pornography is bad. And, and I know there are secular organizations that are just about, you know, wanting to benefit people's lives and, and get them to stop watching pornography because of its ties to human trafficking and that sort of thing. And I think that's good and that's nice. But ultimately, if we're doing it without the gospel, without the gospel message, um, somebody that stops, a non-Christian that stops watching pornography, that lives a nice life, is still going to hell. And that might be a tough message for us to swallow, but ultimately, I want everything that I do, that I create, to be gospel-centered, to be Christ-centered. And in our message about why we should not like watch pornography, I think the message of, well, God calls it a sin, needs to be primary. And, uh, and then we can look at, look, here are some of the actual practical drawbacks of when we do partake in this. It does wreak havoc on your life. Um, let's continue on here. It is arousing. I mean, we shouldn't hide from the fact that a lot of people are turned on by porn and sexual excitement and pleasure feel great. And we shouldn't shame people for that. People often see Christianity as um, completely suppress suppressing. Like it's just about suppressing, 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 and basically you're supposed to be miserable and there's no pleasure allowed and hey, just be sad, basically. Um, it's interesting because I've, I kind of used to think about Christianity in this way that, you know, oh man, we just got to suppress and it's just kind of sad and it's lame and Christianity is boring, but we got to do it because God says so. Um, but then I began to realize that the Bible actually talks about, um, how, how we find tremendous pleasure in 
in who God is and in him and our connection and relationship with God through reading his word, through prayer, through fellowship. Like I realize you're, you're probably watching this like, Isaac, but that's not even, that doesn't even compare to, you know, sexual pleasure. And that's so, uh, you know, awesome or whatever. It's like, okay, I get that. Right. I like, I'm not trying to, trying to say that it isn't hard, that it's not, um, that's not challenging to, you know, not, not just taken to whatever feels good. Like, right. Like lots of things feel good on this earth, but that doesn't make them right. But I guess what I want to emphasize here when she talks about, oh man, it's so nice and it's great and it's fun and it's wonderful, makes us feel good. It's like, well, Christianity is not just about making you feel bad. It's about finding our pleasure and our fulfillment in God. And in him, there is so much to be found. It's just we're so distracted by other things that are lesser things. Like pornography is a lie at its heart. It dis- it kind of distorts the way that we, we think and we see things and it promises us connection, but it delivers us rejection. It, it, it promises us fulfillment, but just leaves us in disappointment. And so it, it, it sells us a bag of goods. And I guess what I'm trying to do is point you to Christ who in him, there is so much fulfillment and, and pleasure and satisfaction to be found. It's relaxing. Different people like to do different things in order to relax. And for some people, at the end of a stressful day, it can be really nice to unwind by watching some porn and masturbating. Three, it can be really useful. Okay. <laughs> uh... I, I really, I really didn't want to watch this video. Like, I'm telling you, I didn't want to watch this. Like, this is so weird to me. Like, I just, okay, like, maybe it's the homeschool kid in me. I'm just like, hearing her say, I, I don't even want to say the word, but maybe that's just me. Her saying, masturbating, um, in, in English accent, it's just, it's just too much for me. Anyway, um, that's as, uh, PG-13 as this channel is going to get. Well, let's talk about a little bit about escapism here because that's kind of what she's saying. Well, it's relaxing after a long day. It's nice to just, you know, escape from the trials of your life and just kind of, yeah, enjoy what, you know, the pornography or whatever else, right? Um, it really taps into the heart of of kind of where we're finding rest and where we're finding um kind of, uh, I don't know, like life is hard. <laughs> I don't want to like, you're not surprised by me saying that, but there are so many things in our, in our life that promise us that kind of relief. And, um, and pornography is one of those things, like I said before, that it lies to us in, in promising us that it does not promise us peace. Only God can provide us with ultimate peace. Um, if, uh, you know, if your conscience isn't completely seared and destroyed, you will feel a level of guilt and shame associated with pornography. And that's not kind of a, a bad thing. That's actually a good thing because it's it's telling us that this is not what God wants for us. This is not God's best for us. This is actually a distortion. This is wrong. And I need to look to Christ and, and what he has offered us in, in welcoming us into his peace and his rest as opposed to giving into this like distortion, man, this isn't it. This isn't the good stuff. Useful for LGBTQ plus folks. Any education or representation of non-hetero or non-cis bodies, desires or relationships is often absent or limited in schools and in the media. So often porn can help to educate, but also normalize a lot of the things that LGBTQ folks experience, but don't find represented elsewhere. This is probably the most horrifying thing that I've ever heard in my life. Um, don't look to pornography for sex education. I'm gonna leave it at that. Do I leave it at that? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty, don't look to pornography or for any kind of help on anything. <laughs> Please, just don't. And why? This, this is one of those moments where I'm like, whoa, the, whoa, like there's a big disconnect here from what I think and how I operate and how I believe and how this person does. And that's not kind of testament to, oh, how awesome I am and I'm so smart. It's like, no, bro, like it really is only by the grace of God that he's opened our eyes to see this in its proper light. And, and we can only hope and pray that people that are kind of, I don't, advocating for this sort of thing, this lady that she will come to our senses and God will open her eyes to see, oh my goodness, what have I been doing? <laughs> like, this is crazy. How could I have recommended this? This is so perverted and, and disgusting. Um, but it, that, that takes, you know, an act of God, literally. 
you can discover what you like. There are so many different kinds of sexual acts out there that different people are into. So perhaps porn could be a source of inspiration and self-discovery. Five. No. Porn can benefit your relationships. Watching porn with a partner could- uh, No again, but I'll, I'll, let her, I'll let her finish. No again, no again. <laughs> That's all my channel has turned into. I just play clips and I'm just like, no. <laughs> I mean, I guess some people think that's what I do. Anyway, hopefully it's a little bit more... Whatever. <laughs> ...could add an extra element to your sex life, but it can also work as an icebreaker in order to be able to talk and communicate about things like your sexual desires and your boundaries. So... Uh, <laughs> this, is a, uh, this is a tough... This is a tough video. Uh, you know when something is so, like, not it? that you have a tar hard time telling you why it's not it because you can't even get into the space of of understanding a person that would think it would be good. So I'm like having a hard time like getting into the mindset of somebody to think pornography would be good in a relationship. Like, oh yeah, like husband, come on over and uh, watch these other people have sex and uh, that, that'll be good for our relationship. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> like crying, like crying. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm having this. <laughs> it's just so. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish the video. I'm gonna finish it. Having sex with yourself and watching porn is a lot less hassle than having sex with somebody else. Okay, and that caps it off. Okay, uh, guys. <sighs> When we talk about when we talk about pornography and any kind of things that go along with that, um, it is a selfish act. It is selfish, right? It, it's not a giving, um, selfless thing by which you're trying to make sure your spouse, who you're married to, is um, is cared for, is is feeling loved, like all the things that play into an actual healthy sexual relationship within marriage. In the con, is she's actually recommending that you like, yeah, that glad we don't have to do that because pornography, you don't even need another partner to do it. You just do it you're by yourself. It's just like completely self obsessed, um, and and that's not the way that God has called us to operate. You know, he, he's called us to be selfless, to give of ourselves to other people, to care for other people, and uh, and you know, this kind of selfish act, though it may be fulfilling in the moment, we might feel good and satisfied in the moment, it won't last. And, uh, and I know a lot of you guys know that, like, I'm not, uh, maybe somebody comes across this video and, and agrees with this lady, but I think there's going to be very few that actually feel that way. Ultimately, a lot of us may agree with the idea that, okay, porn is bad. We don't like porn but we still struggle with it. We still know on an intellectual level, on a spiritual level, that this is actually separating us from God, that this is um, putting a putting a boundary up in our relationship with him and other people, and it's, it's just not good. And so we want to stop it. How are we going to do that? Well, like I said before, there's a video that I put out that kind of highlights the um, some tips and things that I've learned over the last couple of years about some things that will help you break free from pornography. So I encourage you to watch that. Just kind of one thing that I would encourage you guys to do is to become a more open person. Okay. And what I mean by this is this aspect of your life that maybe has been with you for a long time from the time you were a teenager, maybe you're an adult now, uh, you know, mid twenties, whatever you, wherever you're at. Um, this part of your life, I want you to open up to somebody in your life about it, maybe a couple people, and incorporate it into your testimony. You may still be struggling with it. Okay. But at least now you, you've entered that, you've put that piece into, look, this is what I'm working through. This is part of like what, what I'm, what I'm trying to like, you know, break, break the bondage of really and inviting other people into knowing your story. It's going to help you develop some motivation and other people hopefully are going to be like, Hey, how's it going? You know, how's that aspect of your life? It's going to keep you more accountable. Ultimately, your accountability partner needs to be God, number one. And that's going to be continuing to focus on his word, what he has said, letting his word dwell richly in your 
heart. Even in the dark of the night or early in the morning, God is with you. And, and you know, this should bring some fear, fear of the Lord. That's a healthy thing. But just also this understanding like God is with me. He's given me his power and his presence to overcome this temptation. And you can do it. Okay. So I encourage you to watch that video. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, give it a like down below because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge shout out once again to my patrons on Patreon. On. Um, it's just because of your guys' support that I can continue to do that. So thank you so much. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. How are you working through kind of your struggle with pornography and uh, maybe some of your experience with that? You can help encourage some of the people in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you guys next time. God bless.